We're going to take a minute to look at a gravimetric analysis problem that's interesting in its complexity and a little bit unique because most gravimetric analysis problems form a precipitate. You analyze the precipitate to tell you something about the analyte. <clears throat> Here this one's a little bit different in that we have this mixture, the analyte, the thing we're going to analyze, and when we've reacted it with hydrochloric acid, we're going to collect the gas and get a moles of the gas. And from moles of a gas, we are going to be able to tell something about our original sample. And that's what um, gravimetric analysis is all about. So we have a 5.000 gram sample that has three potassium salts in it. And part A of this question says, what is the percentage of the potassium carbonate? But then we're going to go on to find the percentage of everything else from this one uh, addition of chemical. So what we're doing here is we're going to add hydrochloric acid. We're, <clears throat> we're adding 100 milliliters, or 0.1 liter, of a 2 mole per liter solution. Now, of course, that's going to react with the carbon, uh, or with the potassium carbonate, and it's going to bubble out carbon dioxide. And so we're going to dry that carbon dioxide and collect it, and we get um, 249 milliliters at 293 Kelvin and a pressure just a little less than one atmosphere. So using PV equals NRT, we can solve, substituting in those numbers, to get uh, point 010079 moles of CO2. So this is the reaction that occurred. The hydrochloric acid uh, combined with the potassium carbonate in a ratio of 2 to 1 and released carbon dioxide and water and potassium chloride. But the thing we're really interested in is for the carbon um, for the carbon dioxide how much carbonate was in the compound. And they occur in a one-to-one -one ratio. So that allows us to solve for the percentage of potassium carbonate in the mixture. So we have that number of moles that we just calculated of the gas, the ratio of potassium carbonate to carbon dioxide, and the molar mass of potassium carbonate giving us a mass of 1.393 grams of the potassium carbonate out of the total sample for a percentage of 27.9, 27.9, because I think we had three significant digits earlier on in part of the problem. So, now we can go on to find the percentage of everything else in the compound. Now, Let's just kind of recap what we've done. We had the analyte, it had these three things in it. We added an excess of hydrochloric acid. This produced CO2, but the hydrochloric acid did one other thing as well. There was the potassium hydroxide, and some of that, and that potassium hydroxide, in fact, all of it, was neutralized in this reaction because we knew enough about our analyte to know that we had to add excess hydrochloric acid. And so we have this formula uh, to just remind us of the process that occurred. Now, we had excess of the hydrochloric acid, so we titrated that with sodium hydroxide. So this is how much hydrochloric acid was left after this reaction and this reaction that produced CO2. So now we're testing this just to see how much excess hydrochloric acid there is. So we titrate this with um, 1.5 molar sodium hydroxide and it took 86 milliliters or 0 0.086 liters. That's how much excess hydrochloric acid there was after the other two reactions occurred. So now we should be able to answer the percentage of potassium hydroxide and potassium chloride in the analyte. So let's go on and look at that a little more closely. I started it like this. What I'm doing here is tallying up 
all the things that hydrochloric acid were used for in this problem. So after the mixture, remember there was the 86 milliliters of base that had a concentration of 1.5 moles per liter. And of course there's one mole of HCl for every one mole of sodium hydroxide. And that tells me that after both of these reactions occurred, I still had 0.129 moles of hydrochloric acid left. So that's the moles of HCl uh, that I had left. I reacted in the initial reaction with the potassium carbonate. Um, I had this many moles of potassium carbonate. And if you look at the balanced equation, uh, I believe you'll see two moles of HCl required for every one mole of potassium carbonate. So that's uh, 0 0.020158 moles reacted. And um, so those, those two numbers I know, I know the total amount of acid, and this goes clear back to the beginning of the problem, there was 100 milliliters of the acid and it was two moles per liter. So that gives me 0.2 moles of, hydro, of HCl right at the beginning. And I know I had this much left over and I reacted this much. So if I subtract these from the original amount, it will tell me how much reacted with the potassium hydroxide. So um, 0 0.05084 moles of hydrochloric reacted with the potassium hydroxide. So now that I know that, we're going to cause a little major earthquake here and So here's the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the potassium hydroxide. And so I'm going to do the calculation to see how much potassium hydroxide that actually um, would be. Make sure that's showing up. So one mole of potassium hydroxide in the equation here for every mole of HCl. And the molar mass of potassium hydroxide is 56.11. So that comes out to 2.85 grams of potassium hydroxide, and that's 57.1%. So we had an um, analyte with three compounds in it. We've calculated the percentage of two of those compounds, so now you can calculate the percentage of the third, because they should all add up to be... Yes, you've got it. Good job.